Muy buenas tardes, eh, bienvenidos al Club de Poesía del Instituto Cervantes de Manchester y Leeds, un trabajo en cooperación con la Universidad eh, de Liverpool también. Good evening to everybody, to Instituto Cervantes, Manchester and Leeds uh, uh, YouTube channel. In this uh, poetry series that we organize with the support from the Liverpool uh, University also. It is a great pleasure to have all of you to, tonight to, to join us uh, in the reading of the poetry of one of the most important uh, poets of Ecuador, Violeta Luna. This series about the poetry uh, in um, 20, uh, 20, um, 2021 would be dedicated every month to a different country. In January, we have the uh, poet from Nicaragua, R R um, Ruben Darío. And uh, next month, we will be uh, dealing with uh, Uruguay. In May, we will be uh, dedicating the poetry and the literature to Colombia. And, to, and uh, this is the series, uh, the model until the end of, of the year. Uh, as I say today, Uh, we dedicate our uh, series to uh, Ecuador, a very small country in geography, but great in diversity, not only in nature, but especially in culture. As you might know, in Ecuador, it's not only Spanish speaking, it's not only an Spanish speaking country, but it's a country where the pre Columbian languages and cultures are very present. And that gives the whole country a, a very authentic personality. And it is also very present in the works of Violeta Luna. Violeta Luna, as I said, is one of the most important figures of the Equatorian poetry. And uh, her poems are uh, very inspired from uh, what are the usual themes in poetry, love, uh, but also suffering and agony. And uh, she also works very often with uh, social matters. All reflects, as I said, uh, the um, characteristics of some of the characteristics of, of the Equatorian society. And today, uh, to, to discover the, the poetry of Violeta Luna, now we have again uh, Professor Diana Kulel from uh, uh, University of Liverpool. Buenas noches. Thank you very much, Diana, for being with us uh, again. And I will introduce her uh, very briefly for those who, who don't really know yet uh, Diana, because she has been uh, um, working in cooperation with Cervantes since a lot of time. Uh, Diana Kulel has completed her undergraduate degrees uh, in philo philology at the University of Gerona in Spain. And since then, uh, completed a master in European languages and cultures at the University of Manchester and a PhD of Spanish literature at the University of Manchester also. She joined the University of Liverpool in 2008, where she is now professor of Hispanic studies. Diana Culel specializes in Spanish and in Catalan literature and culture, and she has published widely on a range of writers on literary movements. She is particularly interested in new forms of poetry and performance poetry. The topic of her latest monograph, La Perf Perfopoesía Española in the, uh, sig en el siglo XXI, Una Revolución uh, Poética. So thank you very much again to everybody for being there. I hope you will enjoy the evening, I, I'm definitely sure. And as I mentioned, every month we will be with a different country from South America. We share the same language, but we have so many cultures to show. Thank you very much again, Diana. Thank you. Thanks, Pedro, for this very kind um, introduction. So it's my absolute pleasure to be uh, here with you leading this session, the first um, of, well, not the first, the second session on Latin American Poetry Club. So um, as we did with uh, Ruben Darío, the session tonight will be not just, it, it, it won't be me talking, 
um, all the time. I will just say a few words um, uh, to contextualize um, Violeta Luna and, and her work, but then I would really like us to, to read together and understand her poetry, give our thoughts about um, her words um, and, and her verses. So I'm hoping that you will feel comfortable enough to um, join into the in the discussion and and um, help me just uh, guide our readings. Um, I see that we've got you know uh, friends uh, joining us tonight, people who have joined previous sessions. So it's uh, lovely to see very familiar uh, names um, in here this evening. So um, I've selected just a few poems um, by Violeta Luna that I would like to pay attention to. Um, obviously the poems are in Spanish, but last night, very late and very quickly, I sort of translated the poems myself, but this is a very, very rough translation. So it has, you know, no rhyme, no rhythm. It's just to help those of you who might not be completely comfortable or familiar with the Spanish to just understand what Violeta Luna is saying in the poems. So um, I'll try to share in the in the um, the chat um, the the file so that you can follow along with the translations um, in Spanish. So give me just one second and I'll um, and I'll copy it in the chat. But as I said, you know, these these are not to be meant to be proper translations. These are just to help you um, okay, uh, understand uh, a little bit what we're discussing. So uh, you've got the, the poems in the, in the chat um, and I'll share my screen. Um, so what I've done um, is I'll, I'll guide you through a couple of poems and um, for the end, I have actually a poem um, of, it's a video of Violeta Luna herself reading um, a poem at the Festival Internacional de Medellín in, in 2003. So we will listen um, to her less, uh, reading uh, her own poetry. So um, Today we are looking at Violeta uh, Luna, who was born in um, Guayaquil in 1943. And as Pedro said, she is one of the most um, dynamic and original um, authors in uh, Ecuadorian literature. We'll see how absence, time are essential um, aspects um, uh, of uh, Violeta, Violeta Luna's poetry, but so are love and pain, sorrow, nostalgia. We'll see that very much um, in, in the poems that we will read, but also this social commitment, this desire to speak up um, and find yourself in the poetry um, that she's presenting. She studied uh, a Spanish literature at university and then went on to complete a PhD in education, which has always been key to her work, the, the education. She uh, taught in schools and she taught at um, universities. She has been a very, very active campaigner since the 80s um, of human rights and women's rights. Um, she took part, for example, uh, in the uh, Primera Cumbre Mundial de la Poesía por la Paz um, in Colombia in 2003. She's a poet, nonfiction writer, literary critic, professor, and she's published mainly poetry, but also short stories and nonfiction. And I've listed um, in there some of her publications. Um, her poetry has been awarded multiple prizes, um, but I will only mention uh, as a couple of examples, the Premio Nacional de Poesía Ismael Pérez Pazmiño in 1970 and the Premio Nacional Jorge Carrera Andrade um, in uh, 1994. Um, 
she has been uh, translated into English in an anthology um, of poetry uh, from Ecuador, but we couldn't get hold of um, a copy. Um, but I know that the translation into English does exist uh, just as part uh, of an anthology. So this, this is the first poem that I wanted us to look at. And so I'll read Cada Uno. Um, by Violeta Luna. Cada uno construye su casa como quiere, la pone sobre el aire, la siembra en la cintura de la luna o encima de las olas. Cada uno la pinta de manera diferente, la baña con el cielo y el oro verdidulce de la tarde, la llena de jilgueros, de música y hortensias. Encima del verano la edifica. Le pone una ventana al horizonte, una terraza al mar y un pájaro de bronce en el tejado. Cada uno la salva de la furia del invierno, le pone verjas altas, faroles importados de Neptuno, estufas de Chicago y espejos fabricados en Arabia. Cada uno la mide y la corrige, en forma vertical la va agrandando. Le pone un timbre eléctrico y un número de plata. La cuida del mendigo que la ensucia, del niño que le roba una gardenia, del pobre que la mira. Cada uno acomoda su casa a su manera. Presume y aparenta. Construye su existencia tontamente con trapos, pergaminos y billetes. Con vigas antisísmicas, coñac y pararrayos. Qué lástima, pero ninguno construye a su medida su refugio con solo la verdad de cada día y el sol bien compartido. Qué lástima que nadie se haga casas a prueba de mentiras, olvido y desamor. Yo quiero hacer mi casa a mi manera, sin puertas ni cortinas. La quiero dulce y tibia en medio del camino de tus brazos. So um, you can reread the poem um, as I st start um, talking a little bit um, about it. So it's a fairly, I mean, not, not extremely long, but compared to the other poems that we will be reading, um, you'll see how this in comparison is, um, is uh, a bit longer. So what is the poem about? And um, the poem obviously talks about the the building, building a, a house. And um, if you look at the translation that I provided, I did opt for house instead of home because um, Violeta Luna is talking about building something that is as much physical and tangible as it is symbolic and um linked to emotions and feelings so that's why i started talking um about a house uh in the translation uh to then talk about a home and a haven uh, a place where you find refuge and and um you find not sure yourself but uh, those that you love mm -hmm. um this poem starts with cada uno. So, you know, every one of us, each one of us. So this is something that concerns every body. Um, it's a nice way, I think, of establishing this connection with the reader and making it very clear that this applies to every single one of us. Cada uno, and that's why in the in the translation I opted for every one of us um, included um, in in Violeta Luna's uh, sort of you know idea of who she was addressing. So we've got beautiful beautiful images um, in in this uh, in this poem, almost as you know children who are just playing with a dollhouse or creating one. So uh, in a way the poem starts um, almost as with this childish feeling 
um, to it. Um, but obviously, so I'll read Cada Uno um, by Violeta Luna. Cada uno construye su casa como quiere, la pone sobre el aire, la siembra en la cintura de la luna o encima de las olas. Cada uno la pinta de manera diferente, la baña con el cielo y el oro verdidulce de la tarde, la llena de jilgueros, de música y hortensias. Encima del verano la edifica, le pone una ventana al horizonte, una terraza al mar y un pájaro de bronce en el tejado. Cada uno la salva de la furia del invierno, le pone verjas altas, faroles importados de Neptuno, estufas de Chicago y espejos fabricados en Arabia. Cada uno la mide y la corrige, en forma vertical la va agrandando, le pone un timbre eléctrico y un número de plata. La cuida del mendigo que la ensucia, del niño que le roba una gardenia, del pobre que la mira. Cada uno acomoda su casa a su manera, presume y aparenta, construye su existencia tontamente con trapos, pergaminos y billetes, con vigas antisísmicas, coñac y pararrayos. Qué lástima, pero ninguno construye a su medida su refugio con solo la verdad de cada día y el sol bien compartido. Qué lástima que nadie se haga casas a prueba de mentiras, olvido y desamor. Yo quiero hacer mi casa a mi manera, sin puertas ni cortinas. La quiero dulce y tibia en medio del camino de tus brazos. So, um... You can reread the poem um, as I st start um, talking a little bit um, about it. So it's a fairly, I mean, not, not extremely long, but compared to the other poems that we will be reading, um, you'll see how this in comparison is, um, is uh, a bit longer. So what is the poem about? Um, the poem obviously talks about the the building building a, a house and um if you look at the translation that i provided i did opt for house instead of home because um violeta luna is talking about building something that is as much physical and tangible as it is symbolic and um linked to emotions and feelings. So that's why I started talking um, about a house uh, in the translation uh, to then talk about a home and a haven, uh, a place where you find refuge and, and um, you find not just yourself, but uh, those that you love. Mm -hmm. um, this poem starts with cada uno. So, you know, every one of us, each one of us. So this is something that concerns everybody. Um, it's a nice way, I think, of establishing this connection with the reader and making it very clear that this applies to every single one of us. Cada uno, and that's why in the in the translation I opted for every one of us um, included um, in in Violeta Luna's uh, sort of you know idea of who she was addressing. So we've got beautiful beautiful images um, in in this uh, in this poem, almost as you know children who are just playing with a dollhouse or creating one. So uh, in a way, the poem starts um, almost as with this childish feeling um, to it. Um, but obviously we see how at the end is completely different, but it fools us maybe into thinking that this has a very sort of, um, you know, I wouldn't say fun, but light, 
um, theme to, to the poem. Like, you know, we build our houses the way we want. We, we build them on air, like, you know, castles in the air, uh, all this idea, or this beautiful, beautiful image of, you know, sowing, planting things in la cintura de la luna. Hmm? Or, or on the water, on the waves. So it's, it's very, you know, this Im imaginary uh, world that, that we just imagine. And that's, you know, it takes, it, it happens in our minds, all these crazy ideas of how we would build ourselves um, a house. Um, the second stanza with this, cada uno la pinta de manera diferente. Um, it can obviously mean like, you know, we just decorate it, we paint it with a, with a you know, a big brush. Uh, but it's also how we design it, how we draw it um, on, on a piece of paper, hmm? how we imagine it in our eyes, mind, maybe. And just playing with the, uh, this idea of drawing and painting. Uh, we've got these references of baña con el cielo y el oro verde dulce de la tarde. Mm -hmm. So we see all these very warm colors uh, invading sort of this idea we have uh, of the house we are building. Um, and in there we choose to have to populate this house with everything that we want, whether those are birds uh, or music or flowers, whether, you know, uh, in the house we imagine it's always summer or uh, spring. And um, we've got all this window facing, you know, the beautiful horizon, the sunset, um, the sea, whether we just finish it off uh, with um, this uh, pájaro de bronce en el tejado. Hmm? So up until here, it's been this sort of design for a house um, and, and how we want it to look, how we want it to feel for us. Um, but it has all been quite positive. And that's why I said that, you know, the, the poem with these sort of um, childhood reminiscences um, really makes us think that this will be, you know, a poem, light touch on, you know, uh, building a life for ourselves, building a home for ourselves. Um, but in here, cada uno la salva de la furia del invierno, le pone verjas altas. So we, we don't see anything really attacking the house, but we see the challenges the house we might face. Hmm. The house might face the challenges of the winter, hmm? la furia del invierno, what, whether that those are, you know, uh, winter storms. Le pone verjas altas, so if you need um, tall gates, it's to protect it from something. Hmm? Faroles, estufas, espejos, so beautiful elements, but also, you know, the stufas are there to, to help us in winter, etc. So in here we start seeing the slight challenges that the, the, the house uh, we are building might, might face. Um, then obviously we just adapt the house to our needs, la mide, la corrige, en forma vertical la va agrandando, so we see it being built in front of our eyes, we see it you know, uh, growing, being built. Hmm? We've got the ring bell, we put there the number, the house number or the house name um, in, a, in a plate in there. Again, things that might be a bit threatening and might come from outside or from within. La cuida del mendigo que la ensucia, that, that those mendigos might be ourselves living in the house, el niño que le roba una gardenia, stealing things from the garden. Del pobre que la mira, someone who might be coveting the, the house. Cada uno se acomoda a su manera, a, a, su, a su casa a su manera, presume y aparenta. So in here, we are told about how each one uses this house to maybe, you know, um, pretend something that we are not. How this house is used to present an image that might not really reflect who we are. 
construye su, su existencia tontamente con trapos. So we might be too concerned about how the house looks, how, you know, how many um, pieces of furniture we've got in, how much money it costs, hmm? um, whether we've got this big as antisísmica, so we are protected against earthquakes, coñac y para rayos. Hmm? And the, 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 the following um, stanza, que lastima, and this is repeated twice in the stanza, que lastima, what a pity, uh, that none of us um, creates this home to be a proper haven, a ref you know, a place we can um, go to when we need to take refuge from the wall. Um, and we don't build it con la verdad de cada día. So with our day-to-day truth, our lives, our real feelings, exactly what we need. Hmm? Que lástima que nadie se haga casas a prueba de mentiras, olvidos y desamor. And in here, you know, you might remember I mentioned how the, the we are told about building a house, the material, tangible house, and how then we move on to less tangible elements of this house, hmm? what, may, it, what makes it a home and a real home. Because in here, against the earthquakes, you know, uh, against the earthquakes, against the, or, you know, opposed to these bigas antisísmicas, the pararrayos, we are told about mentiras, olvido, desamor. Hmm? And those are elements that are equally important in, in the creation of this house or home that we will face. And it's a pity that no one bears this in mind, hmm? the, the poetic voice tells us. And the poetic voice says, yo quiero hacer mi casa a mi manera. Hmm? So I'll build the house my way quite differently. I won't have any doors in it, nor I have any curtains. So, you know, this will be free access. Anyone will be able to access this home. La quiero dulce y tibia. And, you know, we can talk about synesthesia, whether a house can be dulce, tibia, and en medio del camino de tus brazos. So we realize in here that it was not, the poem was not at all about building a material house because the home is found in the arms of this beloved person hmm, that is in front of her and that the poetic voice is, is addressing. Absolutely. I think that uh, I did select this poem actually because of the beautiful imagery, because to me it, it was really attractive the way the way she talks about building a house, but you can also not just see it but feel it in these beautiful images that that uh, Violeta Luna uh, creates and how she really I think plays with us making us think that you know oh life is wonderful and I'll build this house but then you see how you use it as a fortress indeed with the you know she talks about um, berjas altas so you know the, the need to protect yourself until you actually realize you know what what the house or a home really, really means. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. That's great. Do we have absolutely, absolutely. I think you are completely right. And and that's again um another reason for choosing the poem. Um, because I think that our own understandings of what a house or a home is has pretty much changed in in the past in the past year. Um, thank you, thank you, Tina. That's a that's a really good point. Um, I see I see in the in the chat that a couple of people have left comments as well. So uh, Arancha says the beautiful choice. Interesting to see how one's house is not so much about the self, but actually about being part of the beloved. And that that is a really really good point. Thanks, Arancha. Um, it's really interesting this uh, being part of the beloved because that doesn't come until the very end. So it's almost as if you realize about how important that is at the very, very, very end. So that, that is uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, 
Zorka said that they love the contrast of color and sound in the third and fourth uh, verse, and and that's that's a really good point. Thanks to Zorka for for bringing this up because the the poem is almost you can almost hear the poem um, in every single stanza. Really, there there is some sort of um, reference to oops sorry i jumped the screen um uh, there is some sort of reference um to the sound whether it's the sound of the waves yes or this furia del invierno this stormy winter you can almost hear the sounds of um of the storms yes yeah? so it's it's really interesting the use um of color and i did mention how you know in in the second stanza it's almost as if the poetic voice is drawing or or actually painting on a canvas um the this house uh, that we are that we are building so both um uh, color and sound definitely absolutely crucial um to to the poem so i hope i hope you've you've uh, liked the poem obviously you've got the files so you can go back to to it um later i'll move quickly to another one just because i want to give you a flavor of uh violeta luna and i want you to see at least you know two two or three um um poems um so let me go to the to the next one that I've selected. So I did say how uh, time um, and maybe nostalgia were essential um, elements in Violeta Luna's um, poetry. And this poem, uh, El Plumero, for me, um, represents that uh, very, very clearly. El Plumero. El tiempo del plumero ha sido corto. Estos tinteros negros con su papel secante no han durado. Posiblemente vuelvan al cabo de otro siglo y otra moda. Nosotros, sin embargo, con esa misma cara y estos sueños, jamás regresaremos. Tal vez han de volver las viejas cosas, la tinta verde oscura y el uso de las góticas mayúsculas. Tal vez regrese el trompo, la piedra de moler o el fresco pozo. Nosotros, sin embargo, con nuestro amor de hierba y nuestras iniciales de moriño, ya nos amaremos. Tan solo para el hombre fracasa el reencuentro. No hay doble itinerario ni dos adolescencias transparentes. No hay viajes de regreso ni la ocasión segunda y oportuna para decir al menos perdón, adiós o gracias. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro, for reading beautifully this, this poem. So again, uh, you've got the, the translation um, into, into English that um, I put uh, on, on the chat. Um, so this is basically talking about a quill, you know, el, el, el plumero. Um, and I'm talking about how, or actually this object, this very random object uh, in front of the, of the poetic voice prompts her to, to actually think about the passage of time and of things that might disappear, but come back later that, that you know, they can sort of come back when you don't really expect them. Um, so we start with this very, you know, clear statement almost. El tiempo del plumero ha sido corto. So, you know, the, 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 this didn't last long uh, for the, the plumero. And we're told about how, you know, the inkwells and the blotching paper, how, how that didn't last long. But, you know, they might come back. Um, in about a century when other, you know, when this comes back into fashion, you know, my grandmother always used to say, don't throw away any pieces of clothing, they might come back into fashion, and then you will wish you kept them. So it's about, you know, um, being open to things coming back and giving them second opportunities and second chances. Um, so again, just like in the first uh, poem, 
it looks like, okay, we've got this very crucial sentence, uh, uh, a statement at the beginning, el tiempo del primer ha sido corto, but there seems to be reason to hope um, because posiblemente vuelvan. Nosotros, sin embargo, con esta misma cara y estos sueños, jamás regresaremos. So now we move from this object that prompted this reflection about time to us as people, as human beings, how, you know, we never change, we will not come back. Jamás regresaremos. Maybe, you know, old things will come back. La tinta, el uso de las góticas mayúsculas. So this, this might come back. Maybe el trompo, la piedra. So all these objects are now um, Violeta Luna and the Poetic Voice is talking about all these objects, something that, you know, is around you in probably around your desk. And, but again, nosotros, sin embargo, con nuestro amor de hierba y nuestras iniciales de mortiño, ya no nos amaremos. So, it's a reflection on, again, us as people, how we react to things. Um, it's beautiful, I think, the way um, the poetic voice talks about el plumero and all these writing objects, things that, you know, remain, las góticas mayúsculas, but how our initiales, so uh, the initials of our names, you cannot write them, they will not last. Hmm? And it's not that we will not come back, we will not love each other. Hmm? So this love in there connected to, um, to really who, who we are and the importance. It, because on, it's only for um, man, for, for the human um, being, that we fail in reuniting. Hmm? So there is no double itinerary for us. There are no uh, two adolescences. So you've gone through your adolescence, you will not go back there. And most importantly for us, there are no second chances. Hmm? There is not a timely second chance for us and not a chance to say sorry, goodbye or thank you. Hmm? Um, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So this, uh, and actually she talks about lot objects, but those are all objects connected to um, the writing process poetry itself, which the poetic voice talks about um, mayúsculas, initials, and, you know, this gothic, we can also see the script, can we not, when, when we read this, and we do imagine how, you know, something written by Quill is so beautiful, yeah, this, um, this idea uh, of the, the written word hmm, that, that might represent poetry, and how it might come back, but our feelings will this poetry represents will not maybe um, come come uh, come back. Um, John left a, mess, a, a comment on the chat. Things may return, but we will all soon be dead. Live while you can. I think that is the message in in the poem, really. And also, I think that the poem really wants us to reflect on how necessary it is to know that we won't have second chances and that it's very important to say sorry, goodbye and thank you when we have the opportunity and we when, when we have a chance. So I think that even though it might not be very uplifting, the message is very clear. Like, you know, we, we are given this opportunity to really say uh, sorry, thanks uh, and, and goodbye. Um, Absolutely, yes. So again, it's not about not missing those chances. And the most important thing is love, yeah, and, and loving loving each other. Um, fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, Lily said, it makes me think about the pandemic. When will normal life come back and how things disappeared so quickly that we didn't get a chance to say goodbye last year? That's absolutely true. And it's beautiful how, you know, I'm sure that Violeta Luna, when she wrote this poem, she could not have imagined the life we are living through now. But it's um, we can definitely, definitely relate to it. So absolutely. You are right, Lily. Um, do feel free to, to join in if, if you want 
to, to you know, say something else um, about your comments. Uh, uh, Francesca said objects can be replaced but other people cannot appreciate who we have absolutely and I think that this links to what John said what John said about you know we won't be around to love each other and that is the essence so you know the objects might be there they have a different life uh, sort of a life expectancy and um, we really really need to make the most of what we we have mm -hmm. Uh, a real wake up call, given the pandemic, this is something we can probably all hold to be true. We must cherish our time together and leave things on a good note. Absolutely. Um, Arancha says, interesting that all objects are man-made and for human use. Uh, they are also uh, about beauty, lettering, play, spinning top and sustenance, the well and the grinding stone, what sustains us and what we produce is awarded at a longer time span than we are, which might not be very uplifting, but you are absolutely true, Arancha. That's really, really uh, a good observation. Um, Helen says, makes me think we are all travellers making the most of our journeys. Hmm? And, and again, with the references to all these uh, objects that we use for writing and for documenting this, this journey is another reflection on the importance of the word and the importance of poetry uh, and how much we can learn about it, which is actually what we will listen to uh, in the in the last poem uh, that we will be commenting when uh, Violeta Luna talks about un disparate noble uh, which is which is poetry. Um, the um, academics who have worked on on Violeta Luna have said that you know her her musings her poems about time are really a reflection on, on, on life itself. And that if we look at the other components that I mentioned, for example, uh, you know, absence, sorrow, love, they go back to time again. Yeah. So even when you talk about love and not, not being around again uh, to, to love each other, so it all goes back to time and to life. So, you know, we could basically say that, you know, the, the, the theme of her poetry is just life and how she experiences it. Um, so she's basically, the, it's almost as if the poetic voice is conveying her experience of life and what she has learned so that, you know, she can help us make, prompt us to think uh, about what's important and not. But it, it is really about life, I think, um, the whole of her poetry and, and her life experience and what she has learned um, from it. Um, so the next poem that I selected, uh, I'll, I'll jump that one, is called La Yerba. And I don't know if you noticed, but um, there has been an, a mention just in the in the poem um, that we read um, before, uh, Tu Yerba, Nuestro Amor de Yerba. So it's quite an interesting object, we'll, we'll see. Uh, and you know, it's, it's quite a short poem. Um, but I'll show you as well, this was made into a song and um, uh, just last year so I'll play the song so that you can that you can see it um, um, in in the in performed let's say um, but it's almost you'll see how this poem is almost like a scream or a shout hmm? um, it's all about frustration um, the the frustration of having to be silent for some reason so we'll we'll see So the poem is called La Hierba. Cuántas cosas que pude haberlas dicho y no las dije. Cuántas horas que pude disfrutarlas y no fueron. Cuántas letras que se quedaron sueltas sin remedio. Cuánta vida que pudo ser raíz y eso y astilla. Por conservar las normas de algún juego. Por no poder salirme de las reglas, no pude ser gaviota ni marinera espuma. Y apenas me quedé como la hierba, tenaz y humedecida. What do you make of this poem? This poem talking about, you know, this grass, some sort of grass. Hmm? So, as I said, 
to me, the poem reads like a scream almost um, about these frustrations of the things that the, the poetic voice could have said, but didn't say them. Um, things that she could have enjoyed, but she didn't. And it's interesting how even she frames it as Pude haberlas dicho y no las dije. So I could have done that, but I didn't say them. So she doesn't say, but I couldn't say them or I wasn't allowed to say them. She said that I just didn't, I didn't say them. I could have said those words, but I didn't say them. Um, interestingly, cuantas letras que se quedaron sueltas in the, and this word letters. So does she mean words, stringing words together, or 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 just you know letras in in what sense? So the, the again not saying thanks, sorry, um, uh, a goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, Cuanta vida que pudo ser raíz. So something that could have been a root, a root of something that could have given life to something that would have you know produce something amazing, but all remained just today, a splinter. Hmm? So this negative um, um, reference um, there. Um, all because um, the poetic voice was uh, sticking to the rules of some game. And we've got, you know, this uh, always, you know, uh, uh, games have rules, but it's interesting that she mentions Las normas de algún juego, as if this is a game, life, life almost uh, as a game, um, because of always staying within the rules. Uh, I couldn't be uh, a gaviota uh, nor sea foam. Hmm? And I became just like grass. Hmm? So being green, being nice, but not growing into, I don't know, full trees or something more productive. Just grass, a stubborn, and moistened hmm, by whatever. Um, I've got uh, I've got a couple of co of uh, comments. So Tina said, conforming to society's rules, absolutely. So the whole poem, I think, is this uh, frustration about having uh, to conform to society's rules, or actually um, a, a frustration with oneself for conforming to them. Um, uh, or at least I, I read it like that. John said, it's a similar message to the last one, life is for living and it will pass us by if we let it. Yeah, so, you know, let's be, let's be raíz instead of pastilla uh, or hierba. Um, fantastic. Um, what else do we have? I'm familiar with Ecuador's history, but is there a possibility that this poem is a reference to oppressive regime that limited freedom of expression? Absolutely, absolutely, because it is really the frustration um, of of not being able to express uh, oneself. Uh, that that might be, you might be absolutely spot on on that. Uh, Francesca says, probably a bit abstract, but it reminds me of the situation with Sarah Eberon and the 97% statistic. It's become normal situation to be treated the way uh, that way, but it should shouldn't be that way. Absolutely, yeah. That 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 is actually a beautiful reading. Thanks, Francesca, uh, of of the poem. Um, Simply grass blends in. Yes, yeah. That's that's true as well. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so um, I wanted to show you how this poem was made into a song, because I think that it's quite uh, powerful to see it um, in, in, you know, performed in here. And, and it's actually a video clip. So I'll, I'll show you this.
I'll stop this here, but I think that um, these, um, the music and really, you know, the visuals really help us to understand the meaning of the poem. And, you know, we've mentioned this, um, the feeling of being trapped, of being repressed, of being frustrated uh, with what you cannot or one don't want to say. So that was very powerful having, you know, the same person inside of you trying to get out or trying to express herself and not being able to. So I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I know that some of you uh, need to go and those who have seen me talk before know that I could talk for hours about poetry and that's why, you know, after one hour we are still here and we still have one poem to go. So um, it's a poem about poetry and the power of poetry. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, um, if you check it on YouTube, you can actually put the, the closed captions on with English translation. The translation is not great, but it will, but it will help. So when I um, connected the video, for some reason, you, you cannot um, have the closed captions in there, but they are available to you. So uh, let me show you this video. And this is um, Violeta Luna herself reading Un Disparate Noble at the Festival Internacional de Medellín. Este poema se llama Un Disparate Noble. Si escribo garabatos encima de un papel cuadriculado y grito que mis letras están encarceladas, no quiero que me digan que estoy loca y empleo mal mi tiempo. La poesía, amigos, es un trabajo duro. Más duro que sembrar albaricoques, más duro que clavar una bisagra, más duro que hacer suelas, más duro que hacer panes. Por eso, si escribo garabatos, y en esos garabatos hay verdades, no crean que deliro ni me tomé ginebra. La poesía, amigos, es la mejor tarea. En ella se nos van cien mil latidos, 50 pulsaciones por segundo, vertiginosamente el trompo del cerebro se contrae hasta tocar la sangre. Trabajan las neuronas como abejas, fabrican sus panales y la palabra es miel. En otras situaciones, trabaja el pensamiento como hormiga, escarba silencioso y la palabra es látigo. Es un enyesto muro en donde se golpea la marea. La poesía, entonces, es un trabajo serio, más serio que hacer jaulas y alimentar gorriones. Por eso, si escribo garabatos con verdades, 
no estoy gastando el tiempo. La poesía pura es riesgo y es alerta. La poesía es lanza, es pájaro y es fruta. Un mundo sin poemas sería un mundo esclavo, sería un mundo estéril, un mundo sin defensa. Por eso, no digáis que darse de poeta es cosa fácil y que escribir es bobo. La poesía, amigos, es hija de la cólera, de los deseos truncos, de la fatiga muda. La poesía, entonces, es un trabajo duro, más duro que vivir, más duro que ser buenos, más duro que ser limpios, más duro que ser libres. Gracias. So here you have her reading about the importance of poetry and la poesía, amigos, es un trabajo duro. So hopefully this hasn't put you off and I'll see you in April, the 27th of April, uh, when we will be reading Mario Benedetti. And you'll be pleased to hear that this time you will not be subjected to my horrible translations. I've got a proper translation of uh, Benedetti's uh, work. It was great. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone.